Okay, I'd like to call the uh, Mule City Council meeting to order for um, November the 2nd, 2021. Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Matthew. Here. Councilor Marcus. Here. Councilor Carter. Here. Councilor Lehman. Here. Mayor Thurge. Here. Next, we'll move into the 2022 budget. Diana, you're up again. Lucky you. So I think everybody has the department of budgets in front of you. I'm going to start with the street department. And that budget is at $292,208. It's an 11% increase, and basically we have our greater payment is in there for next year, and also the purchase of a new lawnmower. So that's kind of... Uh, I was going to ask a question. How come uh, the 21 amount is so much greater now? The actual amount? Yeah. Because um, when we had to rent the greater for... Um, Four months. Month. Yeah. That was $74,000. That was not budgeted for. So that's why it's... So that's why there's such a... Is that a difference? Okay. Yep. I figured, but... Mm -hmm. Just a Good question. So just a reminder for the council and the public. That money we paid for rent did go towards the purchase, purchase. price to it so it, yeah, that, yeah. That, that number is a little misleading yes it shows a big over budget but technically we it acted as a down payment towards that yeah. purchase. we had the rental plus we did um the down the, the rental was like twenty seven thousand, and then we paid seventy four thousand one hundred towards the greater mm -hmm. in 2021 and then we have payments annual payments going forward of, Fourteen thousand four hundred. What what we have in capital and the equipment fund? Um, I believe it's like hundred and sixty some thousand. So instead, why didn't we use some of that instead of increasing the budget? We did. We did use. Oh, okay. The seventy four thousand came from capital, but it shows up <clears> in the street <throat> department because that it has to come over to the general fund. So it was taken out of the capital. Okay. For the equipment fund. John, what's here? So, any other questions on the street? Yeah. I don't know. No, I have to ask. Okay. What's uh, excuse me, What's uniforms for four hundred and fifty dollars? Um, per the union contract, the guys are allowed to buy like right. safety steel toe boots or bright neon colored jackets, whatever, sweats, whatever they need. They're allowed. Oh, Ryan, do you remember what it's, the uh, one? It looks like 150 bucks it's a piece. It's 150 a year per yeah. employee. Yeah, yeah. I don't have to give them like a boot allowance. What's that? Don't know. Like a boot allowance? Do we give them that or no? That's part of this. That's, yeah. That's part of this. This was added in the last union contract in 2018. That provision came in with $150 a year per, per employee. Any other questions on the street? Next up is the snow and ice control at thirty-five thousand one hundred forty-two, slightly lower um, than last year. Not much of a difference. One big one savings that the city did differently than in past years. Um, we actually got our sand salt mix through a state contract rather than buying it at a higher price through someone else so that's something we took advantage of too with the state's purchasing power how much of that do we go through in a year salt yeah yeah know. sand salt mix where do we get 21 tons yeah, yeah. yeah. 24 tons yeah okay council marcus could probably answer that better than i can um well, it depends on weather yeah i mean even our number of 36 35 thousand depends on the weather. Now we get our sand from Seppi, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then we mix it we did that. ourselves, right? Right. The only thing I wish we had is a shed to put it in instead of just... Yeah, it, it, it never... I mean, even sometimes the shell will freeze up and all you can do is run over it then it's back to powder. I mean, it's... Yeah, you don't need a shed. <laughs> You know, it, uh, like I say, it'll, it'll just, it'll form just like an eggshell cap. Yeah. And you go in there with the load <clears> of the bucket or whatever, and uh, 
basically we would just pick it up, put it on the ground and drive over it and then put it back in a pile because it was, it was sand again. Like yeah. that. But if we did have a shed, we could keep salt and sand separate and just run salt sometimes. No, we just... You know, instead of putting, dumping it on the ground and letting the rain and snow... Well, it's ever since I've been here, we never had problems with it the way we do it, ever. Uh, and basically, if there's some left over from the year before, we just add that into the, our new batch that we get. You know, we use that sand with the new salt and the new sand and mix it back up. So, it's never been a problem. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Next is the Public Works building. And that's at 9,940. Not too much of a change there, just a normal increases for you know gas utilities. That will be a little bit more expensive. Those are pretty much fixed costs. Yeah. Next is the recreation budget, and that's at 17,825. That is a slight increase as well, a little bit more into events. Um, and then coming out of COVID too, huh? Yeah. So, otherwise there's a lot of fixed ones, the insurance, utilities, um, workers comp. Any other questions on that one? I have a question on this one. Is this something that can be, this budget, can we add to this throughout the year? I mean, if it's something the city's interested in, hey, we need to we need to add to just use event expense for for an example if if there's an idea of we have a big fourth of july deal it, can we add funds to this throughout the year it, it it's something that can come you know if there's a yeah an event like the fourth of july or something but it, it can come back to council to come from the general fund come yeah come whether it's it can be fluid yeah i, I mean it would just not not fifty thousand dollars, but no, but, no. But, but for, like oh, this Halloween thing, there were expenses for that, and that yep. was very very good. And uh, if if there's other things planned, uh, you know, beach blast, then yeah. and Fourth of July, I don't know what else they might want to do, but I, I think we would uh, have an open ear to that. Okay. Well, some of them events like on the Fourth of July, you know, you got to approach the bars. I mean, they benefit more than anybody else does. Mm -hmm. You know, you ask them to kick in, and in the past they have. You know, if you're going to do something, so. And yeah, Bita's always given a few bucks. And, and there is, um, in capital, there is a designated recreation. There's about 11000 in there in the capital fund for the park. So. Okay. Yeah, and we do have the, the labor built into this, which is... Yeah, it's, it's tough going everywhere, I mean. So. Yeah, and then there'd be extra. We don't have the rink opens, you know, so many days or whatever. And mm -hmm. I was I was kind of curious to see if we've uh, seen a savings, and I suppose we did without having uh, workers. We had it open last winter, didn't we? Yeah. And yeah. we had them on the lights on a timer. We had the lights on, and our guys kind of flooded it. and. Well, John did a lot of work, volunteer work, and uh, turned lights off and on and helped flood and clean. Yeah. So. yeah, I put the lights on timers because the shack wasn't open. I mean, basically nobody was up there, so I think I ran them from 4 to 8, 8.30. And right now they can do the same thing. You just got to plug it in, set the timer, because it's all set up. Mm. And you can do whoever's up there, you can do the same thing. So... We did see some winter labor savings because it wasn't fully in January. Ryan, this is probably a question for the attorney. Can the Recreation Board Commission, whatever, can they fundraise legally? As far as I know, I know others have done events, fundraisers, things like that. I mean, just something, just another weapon for the. Uh, Rec board, if, if you know something comes up, I mean, as simple as a could be a raffle or anything else that that they could want to dream up. Well, I think one of the one of the good things too has been 
um, kind of a partnership, I guess you could say, with St. Louis County and Youth in Action and some of the events, you know, I, I think you combine a couple groups, you can get more of the outside groups contributing mm -hmm. to, I, I think that's that's a good thing. And Tara yes. Burnett, uh, she does a great youth, job. Youth in Action does a lot of credit. She saves us a lot of money. Next is the campground budget, and that's at 1060 Well, the only thing on the recreation, that garage door on the shack up there, it's got to be changed. It hardly, it doesn't really work. It's not even insulated, and you got all electric heaters heating that place. It's only a 7 by 8 door, but you got to have somebody come in and change it. We're going to have Ryan look into that. It's no, bad. Right. guys take care. You know, yeah, get an estimate. It should have been insulated when they put it up, but they didn't. It's just they're really, and you're going to have a hard time opening it. That's how bad it is. So if we can get somebody to come in and find a price on the new door, get it fixed, save some heat. Ryan, you can you take care of that? I'll take care. Okay, thank you. Will you just let us know by uh, the next meeting on Monday next week? That's pretty short notice. Well, I mean, just how it's going. Do you find somebody for her? Yeah. We'll have to get quotes. That, that's yeah, I'll the lot. Yeah, I'll keep you. Whichever. Yeah. yeah, those guys were just at Chris Manor's garage the other day, too, and I was going to stop and ask them, you know, we need a door and what would it cost to put it in, but, man, yeah, I got busy. You know, if they can get supplies to it, we don't know what to supply is for that so but hopefully it can be done it's, this year it's, it's bad that's got to be fixed okay any questions about the campground um. budget's just slightly higher just because of the port of bodies that goes up a little bit every year i suppose you don't know how much we made on the campground um off the top of my head no but i can let you know didn't break even um most likely. Oh. I mean, it's kind of between like eight and twelve hundred dollars. So we usually break even. And we have just our guys uh, patrolling that? Yeah. Our guys in the Chisholm PD, which, yeah, I, I do think a conversation needs to be had before opening next year about, you know, whether it's going to be open, whether it's going to be better utilized as some other recreation area just because some of the clientele unfortunately it's it's attracting being kind of an honor system mm -hmm. you know it's it's a lot of work both for the PD and our guys to you wouldn't believe some of the stuff out there sometimes. Who oversees that? The city council or the rec board or the city hall? I mean Ultimately, I mean, it's the council, but it should be, I mean, I think it's something that should be directed towards the recreation board okay. to come back for a recommendation. Well, they, they, can, the they can make some recommendations to us then. Have you trespassed anybody that you've had problems with before? Mm -hmm. So there's a list probably of people that are... There's, there's a list. I mean, you know, un unfortunately it's, you know, with a lot of homeless kind of congregate to there, which... You know, I've called the county and, you know, directed them towards assistance and things, but unfortunately it's it's a safety issue both for them and for others in the community when dogs aren't on leashes and this past year when they were burning when there was a stream drought on in a wooded area, it's just not the smartest. Probably should need some uh, better ordinances for that, huh? I mean, we have the rules posted, but without, I mean, our guys checked it daily, but PD was in there daily, but, you know, they, we had complaints of people taking chainsaws at 2 o'clock in the morning, unfortunately. Whether it's the city, whether it's our police department, we just can't be there 24-7, and it's being, it's being abused. The rules are pretty clearly posted on that big program, so. Yeah, but there's nobody there to enforce them. Yeah. And I'm not going to have the rec board policing it either. No, no, that's not fair. But but I think it should it should be a discussion had on 
that level and on the council level after the recommendations. That's, that's and then work with the police department because yeah. they're, they're the hammer on this whole thing. They, they can make, they can clean it up pretty easily. <clears throat> uh, city guys in the morning. That's one of their stops. Is going there, so they watch for the garbage and make sure that people there are damn. <laughs> but, and they collect the the box, so yeah, yeah. That's okay. draft to tighten up is that collection, the honor system that that never works. Not with the homeless problem we have up here. But the rec board can make recommendation to us and we'll look at it and hopefully pass it and tighten it up a little bit. The next department is the senior center. And that's at 9,490. The majority of that is just basically all fixed costs. The insurances, the phone, utilities. Not really anything there. Next is the community center. Again, it's at 9859 and again that's basically just the fixed costs, the insurance um, and utilities. A little bit for repairs and maintenance. So the the curling club doesn't donate any money to our causes here? Um, $1,000 a year. $1,000. Well, Hibbing gives 18000 Yeah, but the uh, council a couple years ago only directed to have like $200 an event when we had an event there. So, well, well we I had, had, see, I had give a thousand problem dollars. with this. You guys gave hometown focus $1,500 to advertise your bond spiel, who won and whatever, it was on two pages. And you gave them fifteen hundred dollars to advertise, you know, put in a paper, and then you give the the city a thousand. I don't think we paid fifteen hundred dollars. I I know it is because I put articles in the paper. I put my grave saver thing in the paper. I know what it cost. You had two pages. I'm just saying I, we never put uh, ad in the paper. I mean, I all you got, how come? Hibbing, Chisholm, and Virginia all have a raffle to raise money for their curling clubs. They sell $100 tickets, $200 tickets, $250 or 250 tickets. They make $12,000. They give out eight, and that's their expenses. I mean, is that a hard thing to do? I suppose not. I mean, we put that Centennial uh, Parade in Kinney on, and we sold... Uh, hundred dollar tickets and we had more than enough money to pay the expenses for putting on a parade I'm, you know I, I'm just saying the can. curling club people should do but something instead of just relying on the city to pay for everything that goes on down there what's the difference between that and the senior center or any other building we're paying for all that stuff John oh well <sighs> and a few years ago the council agreed on an agreement with the curling club to lease that's the a early agreement and that's what the council come up with. That's what we, it was only $200 event. Out of the good graces of our hearts, we give $1,000 every year. And we only have one event down there we had to pay for. Do you what? You but paid for we, what? We used to have a couple of them, like the uh, Billy's and the Barney. Yeah. And what does that have to do with us? I'm saying, the council a couple years ago went into agreement with the current to release the building. They come up with two hundred dollars for an event, a major event. Okay, here's a and we give a thousand dollars. Here's a senior center. Back. Every year, the senior center hosts an average of seventy-five to hundred events. It's a it's a building that's there for three hundred sixty-five days, twenty-four-seven. Curly clubs not. Uh, the the members from the senior center. Contrib contributions approximately three to five, four thousand dollars of their own funds to upgrade and maintain the facility each year. How, you're not, how can you compare what they do and offer and what you do? I don't think this discussion should be here at this table. Well, I think uh, it's we have on to, the page. I just bring it up. No, no. I mean, that, I think I'm glad you brought it up. But I think that uh, the curling club has a board. They're having a meeting, or do they have it already? 
Actually, that one set for. Yeah, uh, I think that, that, that we should set up a meeting between the curling club officers and a couple of uh, council people and just work, work, bring up what Johnny's saying and then and, and get right from the horse's mouth. Uh, if you paid uh, for the hometown focus, whatever. I, I don't know. I can't answer that. I don't know. know. But John has good questions. And sort of you have some good answers, but I think we need to meet and come up with a plan. Is this, is this governed at all by the rec Recreation Board? I don't think so. No. This would come under the city. Okay, just checking. Okay. So that that's, I think, should be the next step. Well, we're here. We have to cut costs. And where these guys are going to come up with these costs, I don't know. I mean, basically, we came in here and said we projected a 19% increase. So what in this budget have we said anything about? Well, we're not through it yet. Okay. We, we haven't set a final uh, budget yet. That, that's what we're doing now. We're going through this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I know. We that's this that's up. right. However, the next step for this curling club is to get the officers, and you especially, John, to be in that, probably Stuart, since you're a member of the curling club, sit down and hammer something out or leave it as is. I mean, but I mean, it you, would you just brought it up. be so easy for the curling club to pay their own way with a ra one raffle a year. And plus what they make on their own bond spills, I don't care. Yeah, I don't disagree, but once again, we should have that discussion with them. You know, I walked into the Last Chance. They had the $100 ticket. Walked into Chisholm, they have it. You go to Virginia, they have it. It's a fundraiser for so like, to cover their expenses. Well, That's I'm all I'm budget, saying. Boys. I earn it out in a, in a meeting. The budget, boys. The next department is Lake Leander, and that budget is 617. That increase is due because St. Louis County's um, solid waste fees increased. But otherwise, it's just um, we have insurance and solid waste fees for that Lake Leander. And that's it for tonight. Thank you, Ben. Well, just one issue on that Lake Leander property. We own it and can't use it. Why can't we use it? Because the Boy Scouts schedule things up there during the summer and the fall, so you can't go up there. Well, is there, that is there, there any is there a contract with that? Originally, we bought yeah. that so we could make money on it because the DNR and the county put it up for sale. Right. Is there any income off of that property? No. No. Nothing. Okay. What they collect from other Cub Scouts that come from wherever they they keep. Put it out on the market. I think we should just put it out there. It's uh, the set set at seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yep. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, you said they schedule like during the summer. Does that mean there's open openings in the yeah. schedule? Yeah. Like the rec board could schedule. Just to just to clarify for the council and the public, the scouts have been using that property back I don't know 20, 25 years. Basically, the agreement between the city is they maintain that property for us, you know, grass, weeds, dung trees. Yeah, I mean, they, they put work into that property in exchange for using that property. Um, as long as they bring us a schedule up or when they're gonna use it. Correct, the, the city keeps the schedule for that property. Um, you know, it, it is a liability concern for the, for the city having, you know, Anybody and every, everybody go out there, um, you know, with the, with the Boy Scouts. That's just kind of been the agreement with that. We know, you know, that there's not going to be alcohol. There's not going to be partying. It's Scouts up there for a purpose. And that's just kind of been the agreement long before any of you were on the council. And that's just kind of how it's been. And, and they do, I will give them credit, they do, do a good job maintaining that. Is that something uh, we can utilize for events? I'd rather check with legal counsel and insurance on that before I give you an answer. Okay. I just don't want to. It was, and it was three years ago, two or four years ago, and uh, they had a they were they invited the council up there, and uh, me and Councilor Keekley took in part of that and went up. Tour the grounds. They showed us what they were doing, all the things that they do, and you know, it was a great, uh, great day up there and talking to them and seeing what they do. And, and I'm sure they would be open for anybody else to come up there and look around or 
and show you what they do. All they, you know, they could do all winter long. Plows the road, and they have a pretty nice cabin there. So, how about parking? Parking. That's, that, an that's going to be an issue. That's an issue because you have neighbors real close right there. You have a, that. That's a well-used road. Entering into it, and you start feeling. You know, I mean, there, there's other issues we have to consider and concern. I, I like Ryan's idea. We need a legal opinion. We probably also include the law enforcement too, because we're our law enforcement's going to do. It. It's going to be the sheriff. So I mean, there, there's a lot of steps that have to take place. But um, I'm not opposed to looking into this kind of a thing. And um, I just soon not sell it, but and the scouts pay nothing. We were gonna. They just maintain it. We were gonna get into an agreement with them too, but that never just never happened. Then, yeah, that's before my time here. So. COVID, yeah, so COVID kind of puts. They've just kind of started using. They'll start using it again this winter. We started taking, letting the local troops, Virginia, hitting. Well, even if they should be paying rent, <laughs> you know, it's our property. It is, but we're doing something good for our community. I mean, where, where else are they going to utilize a piece of property like that? Well, if I'm correct, we don't even have a scout troop in town anymore, do we? No. No. Virginia Hibbing? Yeah, Virginia Hibbing, I think Cherry, because the Cherry group, I believe, right? Chisholm or anything? Campground or weird. Mount Nain? I don't know. There's not a lot of scouts. No, that, that's, that's... But they come, you know, they, have, they do have quite a few... Uh, well, I'm kids. just saying that money, if we did put it up for sale, would benefit everything else that all the projects that we have we should be you know looking at and when you apply for money usually the CDBG or the IRB doesn't give you money you usually have to match it you know this would give us those funds for years to come I'd rather have the asset in the land Me too. I listen to all this green space stuff around town too and uh, green space is valuable. There's no doubt about it. Well, that's like having nothing. Well, the thing is, <laughs> we may have to revisit the use of that land and the cost to use that. Well, we better check on our liability because... Well, I'm just saying with the scouts, there should be an agreement that, that besides uh, cleanup, I don't know. Ryan, how, how, do you have a written agreement somewhere that you can bring to the next council meeting just for us? Yeah, I'm, I'm in discussions with them trying to because that's a requirement from the auditor going into 2022 um, with kind of whether it's the Curling Club, Senior Center, Boy Scouts, we need to have some type of written agreement. doesn't have to be complex, but just basically outlining the roles of the city as you know, the, the landlord and those utilizing the property or facility. I think they should at least cover the cost for the insurance and anything else we have you know, ab above and cleaning it and keeping it neat. And then if we're going to run events there, I, I, I just think legally we're really making a stretch there. we got to be careful. That's something we can assign to Attorney Carney. How many acres is up there? Uh, 2.83 at point. Okay. I, th I think it's closer to in total to seven to nine somewhere. Yeah. There. It's, it's a very. I got a map on it. The only the only drawback, according to the county, is that it does not meet the specs as far as building a building on there. Oh. The the width isn't right. It's it's not enough. So it's not a buildable lot. As far as putting the septic system and all that oh. kind of stuff on it. No point in selling it at that point. Well. Well, I think with a tank that, you know, you're talking about a drain field. A yeah. tank can be... A tank can be installed. Oh, yeah. That can, that can go in on that property. Well, let's wait and see what Ryan comes up with yep. with the scouts. Come back. We, we all seem to have a different opinion on this one. Yeah. Um, and, and I respect everybody's individual opinion. I have mine. And, uh, and we'll see what happens. But let's uh, roll on with that. Any further questions for Diana, I guess? Good job. Thank you. 
Thank you. If not, reports from department heads, and we don't have one in here. Ryan, do you anything you have to yeah, say? I have just a few things. Um, uh oh. I'm still in discussion with the city of Virginia regarding the tornado siren, siren, the warning siren. What they told me is the reason there was a big system failure. That's why it didn't go off in Buell. Um, and I'm kind of working with their fire chief right now to figure out what options. We have, um, he had mentioned a couple things about software upgrades and things like that. So the reason it didn't go off was a system failure for whatever reason, and we're kind of working out solutions. And Do we know who, on whose end, our end or their end? It's their end. They control, okay. they control the They system. control everything, yep. and that should be on them. So yeah. Okay, very so good. I'm going through. Um, next thing, I just put a memo out there and just for the council of the public. Uh, the city of Minnesota Power is scheduling a temporary power outage to do some preventative maintenance and replace some insulators over on Culver Avenue. That will be on November 17th starting at 8 a.m. Uh, scheduled class approximately two to three hours. Basically everyone north of Woodbridge will more than likely be out of power yep. for that. That amount of time, we'll put up notices around town, put it on the website, things like that. So just have, have a mailer go up to or Yeah, we'll do it, put them in P.O. boxes or whatever, but we'll get that information out here. But it's, it's coming quick. But we got a couple weeks to do that, but I just wanted to mention that to the council. And also, um, with Minnesota Power, um, we're just about there on getting a contract back to the council to finalize for the next eight years. Um, I'm sure some of you have heard that Minnesota Power just asked the PUC for an 18 and a half, 17 and a half, whatever it was, increase um, to retail rates. Um, that would not affect the deal that the city of Buell is getting with Minnesota Power. We would not see an 18% increase in residential rates. That's only for retail rates, um, members, the residents who are towns that don't buy wholesale power through Minnesota Power. So residents don't, do not have to worry about that. Um, like I said, we're just about there, just some fine tuning of the language between the attorneys, but it will be a very good deal for the residents of the city of Buell and our businesses once we approve that. Then, you know, they're projecting 15 bucks a month on average for a residential customer. That's you will, you will not see that happen. That's all I have. Hey Ryan, on that uh, that service provided to us for the tornado siren, is does the city incur a cost for the the services? Mm -hmm. The city the city paid an upfront cost to purchase the software and the siren. Okay. So Vir Virginia controls it for fibers, and I know it's Mold Iron, Evelyn, Fail, Virginia, and there might be a couple more mixed in. Um, like I said, I'm still working on. Okay. The I was just curious if there's like some, some monthly subscription or something. To no. It. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in, in the event that we need to upgrade software, there might be a cost that would be distributed between gotcha. all of us. But like I said, that's we're looking into that, and we'll, that will be something we'll figure out throughout the winter and make sure it's up and ready for spring. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I don't ask. I um, heard about a complaint on the snowmobile trail with some dirt. Do you hear about that? I have not. I took that call. Oh. I talked to him and um, I connected him and Trent. So Trent was going to get it taken care of. Because there was a bunch of dirt that Casper piled up down there. That dirt fell into their trail and it's blocking the trail. So. Okay. Put a note on that to the, to the crew tomorrow. So. <clears throat> and I think if I'm thinking of the area that you may be talking about, I, I think that might have been dug out, and it needs to be there needs to be that patch of trail that connects Grant Location Road and the Masabi Trail. Okay. Right before that turn. Right before the yeah. corner down there. That's. Does that sound about right, Stuart, from what you've heard? Yeah, was, Diana? I, so that. All the way back there, so there might have been some. I heard about it. i seen some. i got a <coughs> pictures on it today, and I was just curious if uh, we were taking care of that with Casper. Yeah, there was, because I'm sure, because I know they had to take out that little section that when it started to jog to the south there. 
Yeah, I don't know if you were aware of that, John. Or not. All right, that's all I have. Perfect. No, that, I'm glad you brought that up. Okay. There are no council additions to the agenda. Number six, citizens form. Did anyone sign up? No? Okay. Move on to consent agenda. The minutes, the regular city council meeting of October 19th, 2021. And then claims, payroll number 22, $13,182.50. Payroll for October $2,350 and accounts payable $25,498.87 for grant total of $41,031.37. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda with uh, meeting minutes and the uh, claims? I'll make a motion. Motion by Stewart. Is there support? Support. Support by Gene. Further comment, question, or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. That motion is carried. We'll now move on to the business portion. Uh, construction and progress update. John, welcome. Why don't you give us an update of where, where we're at, and then uh, I'm sure we'll have some questions from the council. Yeah, they're uh, continuing to work. All the underground's basically done. Um, uh, they are scheduled tomorrow to pave. Sorry, the two of us will be in town. Yeah. We're going to finish the two alleys um, um, between uh, Pennsylvania and Whiteside. Those paved all the patches on Wanless, Sharon, um, uh, they're paved the intersection of Forest and uh, Pennsylvania at County Road portion, so that'll be. Finish that up the wear course, and uh, anywhere else, there's a few more patches here and there to do. But it's all going to be the base course should be done. They will not be getting to doing any of the wear course in the final lift, except for that little section on um, Forest in Pennsylvania. And the patch they're going to do by um, there's we call it Alley G down by Salt Memorial. You know, they put the curb and gutter in there, right. and I'm going to fill that in to finish grade, and I'll put their, put their match on that tomorrow. And then they're, uh, they had most of the manuals adjusted for finished grade for the wearing course. They're in the process of putting, bringing them back down to the little ground for the uh, snow, snow plowing season. So. Are they doing that with all the manholes? All of them. Okay. Are they going to, on Woodbridge, dig up those old steam vaults and fill them with mill feed or pack them? I mean, I, when he packed around those vaults that were left there, they didn't, if you go on Woodbridge, it's breaking up. I mean, it's, yeah. they should have put mill feed or well, composite. They, they pull those, what they're going to do on, uh, Woodridge, they're going to tear that up, rip that out tomorrow and patch it in. Oh, okay. Recompact it. Yeah. There's a steam line that was real soft when they backfilled it. Okay. It took out part of the steam pipe. I think what they area. put as a backfill is important. Yeah. Yeah. Either milk That's or because it was composite. wet when they put it back in. Yeah. Okay. And they, no more, they put the base course down and broke up right away. So I think there were just those two vaults. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, that's all. And uh, and then we're going to do some more concrete work. There's uh, a little bit more. Uh, oh, let me finish on the paving part. The only thing that won't be done will be, of course, wear for the entire project and a few of the individual driveways, but all the base course will be done on all the streets and alleys on the project. So. And Woodbridge are in Brentson? Mm -hmm. I know it wasn't brought up, or it was brought up at the meeting, but I see the sidewalks on Woodbridge where they tore them out. They don't put any kind of something in there. Yeah, that's that's what we're talk about the concrete next. So that's oh, so yeah, they're going to come back. They're going to be doing some concrete, but those sidewalks they're not going to get them all done this year. But they're going to have to bring up class five to okay. finish grade, okay. and then focus on the concrete where to go from the curb. 
mm -hmm. to the individual sidewalk alone, oh. the catwalk yeah, portion yeah. that's perpendicular yeah, okay. to the streets, not only on Whiteside and Woodridge, but in mm -hmm. a few other areas. Of, there's a few more on Roberts to do that area. Mm -hmm. um, they're done with the sodding for the year. Yeah, they ran out of sod. There was there's sort of the seed and temporary mulch, some areas they didn't get finished. I always want to put the sod on after, or, you know, get the wear course done. So that goes together with the rest of the project schedule. So, and then there's a lot of cleanup yet to do this year. It sounds like the weather's going to cooperate for a couple more weeks. Just to warm up over the weekend, so it'd be good we got the paving done. Is that other part of Woodbridge, John, that's going to be done next year? That last block. East of Wanless. Oh, yes. East of uh, Wanless. Yeah. yeah. The one we just passed not too long ago. Is that what one you're talking about? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we that decided was... not to tear it out this year because of just the tightness right, yeah. of everything. Yeah. Okay. There's a couple more that we were talked about. Uh, we wanted to you know, maybe look at doing the rest of Roberts and crossing the highway there. And, there are a couple other streets maybe consider next year, you know, with Dr. Ryan about that earlier. But it was enough to do to get as much, you know, the major project, the main project done this year, and they got pretty pretty close, but but they're, you know, committed to put it back to put it back together as best they can. And uh, they did do some of the rough grading work on uh, Burnett Edition. And they should be starting the water line on Friday as we schedule on that, Thursday or Friday. Yeah. One thing, John, about the progress, um, you know, some people are upset that how come it didn't get finished, how it didn't get done. But what the public doesn't realize, or they forgot about, is that this city council added a lot of project work after the original bid, such as Whiteside Avenue, Woodbridge Avenue, and Grant Location. So we almost expanded the scope another 30, 40 percent, wouldn't you say? So, yes. so it's, it's not the contractor. that We put the contractor out there doing all this stuff. And we added all those streets. And... Uh, through the help of Senator Thomas Sony getting that bill passed at the legislature. But then also, it was a big project to start with. And we ran into some things that who, would, who thinks you're going to run into trolley tracks and cement vaults with asbestos and things of that nature that who would know. So I, I think it's been, a, it's been a challenging job for not only you, but for the contractors. And, and it's frustrating for the public, too. Yeah. And uh, I want the public to know also that if you see something that's not right, uh, I saw something about why you're sticking up that, call Ryan at the City Hall. Casper's been great. Anytime Ryan calls, they get on it as soon as they can. Just like Stuart brought up that issue, I'm sure that will be dealt with in the next couple of days. So it's uh, a big project like this. You have to have a little patience. Understand it takes time, but also we as a city put additional burdens on those people. So we, we added the contract. And another thing now, I, I saw some complaints about that this city isn't finished all of these projects, but yet they're starting up on the uh, uh, new addition for the housing. Well, that's a completely different crew, if I'm not correct, John, right? That's sewer and water again, yes. as opposed to they were done with that in town. So that's a whole different division uh, of Casper that's doing that. It's not, we're not taking work away from their crews that normally do this work on the alleys and on the streets. This is a different division that dug up our, our city earlier. So just to try to clarify some of the, the comments and innuendo that are going around town. Mr. Mayor. Yes. One comment on that scheduled timeline. We even had quite a huge problem with St. Louis County on their part project when they were doing it, right, John? Well, that, that was a big add-on, too, was the county with cooperative agreement with the city did Pennsylvania Avenue. That was, yeah. And they were only supposed to... And they to had some issues with some bad soils and some things like that that they ran, ran into. And it was only they were going to, like, try to leave a lot of the old stuff, but yeah. getting into it, then they had to just yeah. take the yeah. whole thing because... Yeah. 
and it was a huge cost then too. Yeah, so. yeah that saved us money. I mean, yeah. and it did it right. That's the nice thing. It did it correctly. Yeah. People remember we we're having some of those uh, yeah. sewers caving in there. Yeah, the remember. storm sewer. Yeah, the storm sewer. So. And just just to add to as far as some of the delays and timings on this, you know, all all these the changes are we running into any, anything unexpected like the steam vault, the asbestos things like that, they're running through how many sets of engineers we need approval from first to even do this work. Most significantly, USDA Rural Development, which is a federal agency, which, you know, unfortunately, they work at their own pace. And, you know, for us to go in and do anything, we need their approval first. I mean, we've, you know, the, the communication back and forth between the engineers, Casper, the city, I mean, it's endless almost. I mean... It's technical, I mean, so that that takes some time too, and sometimes you don't expect to run into trolley tracks or this or that. But you know, they have to go through everything and anything to you know give us the okay. So that it, it takes time to work through some of those issues too. Well, we threw the federal government a few curves, didn't we? <laughs> I mean, things that just don't happen in normal construction. And I got to give give you props, John, for all your engineering and hard work for this project, and not having. A lot of change orders. I don't know. We only had a couple, haven't we, for the whole project? Yeah, yeah we've had it overall. You know, so we're staying within budget of what we had on the project. You know, the biggest overrun we had was running into all these extra steam lines that we didn't really know about. I mean, we knew they had a steam system in town, but and we had one map that was dated in 1926 or whatever it was. And they found it, and then we wanted to put, make sure it was properly taken care of because, you know, the steam line had asbestos around it and was encased in either clay or concrete. So we wanted to make sure we got the abatement assessment abatement company in here to properly remove the asbestos so the contractor could take it off. And that was, you know, that was a that was that was probably the big overrun we had on the project. And um, one more point, if I could, uh, Mayor, regarding Barnett Tradition. We, the city, bid that as a separate project. It wasn't an add-on to this. So okay. When we bid it, Casper, being in town, got the bid, but we did get bids from other contractors for that project, so we awarded it to the lowest bidder. So just keep that in mind, too, that that one was competitively bid. Like it was supposed to be, so. And it was to Casper's advantage that they were already mobilized. Exactly. And it, Another company to mobilize, and the cost would have been quite a bit more. So we got a low bid, and we got a good bid. Yeah, yeah. And then, okay, I mentioned the siding and the seating. Yeah, that's, that's all I have. Council questions? I have a question. Back to uh, the pavement on Woodbridge. Can you explain exactly why that blacktop's breaking up? Uh, on that uh, east end? I, I've seen it personally. I've seen it on Whiteside at the intersection down on yeah. the east end of it. I saw it on Whiteside. Woodbridge is worse coming from the east end back this direction. It seems to be in quite a few locations. Yeah. I understand. The, we ran to steam line there and we took it out and when they backfilled... Where, what street are you talking about? Woodbridge. Woodbridge? Okay, on the east end of it? On, somewhere on the east and I don't know exactly how many bad spots there were but I know there was one. They're going to be tearing out uh, Blacktop tomorrow and redigging and re-putting some... The, the backfill that they brought in there, it was wet, it was raining or something would happen. It, it got wet and it got sloppy. So and they paved it and broke up right away. Okay, that, yeah, that was my question. Was the and so they're going to replace that. And again, what we do is put the base course down on these things, so let it settle over the winter months. If they got to, you know, if it settles a third, second time, we'll we'll get it uh, patched in. Okay. Put the wear on. That's one thing that's going to help is not putting that wear course on this fall and letting it sit over winter. So. It, Gets a frost freeze cycle on it to stiffen it up to 
I mean that that one spot that's down on Woodbridge. Yeah, there was a rain, like a where they stopped one day and it was we're gonna rain. And it was really raining, wet, and then driving a big trucks on it too don't help it either. But no, it does help it. Then you find these spots just yeah, exactly, exactly what happens. You want to find them spots. Well, that's why the winter will will tell but, us, and then we'll repair everything in the spring, and put, then put the final coat on. Put mill feed in there or composite, which is ground up tailings. I mean, a uh, tar, cement, and half class five. It'll pack hard, and that's what they have to do. Take that chunk out of there, pack it, and then put the top on. Well, there. obviously, it was something to do with what's under the blacktop, correct? The dirt work under the blacktop? Yeah. Is what's causing that? Whether well, it be yeah, moisture I mean, we, issues? We dug it all. We brought in a class some base material and a class 5 yep. and a geotextile. So we had almost a two foot, from some of the area, about a two foot subcut. Yeah. Is where it got wet. And then, you know, we then didn't they do paved, any they paved over it before. You know, we did some storm sewer work on Sharon. But otherwise, there wasn't any other utility work on Woodridge, just the, the storm sewer that went perpendicular. So, I'm sharing, but. so what caused that blacktop to break up is the dirt work under it was wet? It was wet. That's okay. Wet, so, yeah. so that, that'll wreck the proctor value in that dirt, correct? Too much moisture? Yeah, it is just, yeah, it would... You take the, you had a pipe in there, so then you bring a new material and that settles and when it was wet. The rest of the material is the same material that was in underneath the road. So now you've got different material in between older material and it just, it got wet and it settled and it broke up. I mean, it doesn't happen very often, but it did on this particular area of, of the project. Well, I guess my only concern is if, was it done in other places? Are we going to see that all over on those streets? Or is that, that should be confined to those locations there? Well, I, I anticipate just where we had that steam line was the issue that I'm aware of right now. We've had, you know, we haven't, you know, we did all the underground work last fall on, you know, Jones and mine and state. We didn't really have any settlement, even though we didn't get the wear course down, we were planning on doing the wear this year, but we didn't get it around, you know, it had to get done, but we didn't really have any settlement values on any of that utility work. But whatever it is, it will be rectified if there's an issue in the spring. That, that's the bottom line for, for me, and I think for everybody, the citizens and the rest of the council. Any other questions for John? I got one more, John. Uh, the alleys, are we only putting one uh, lift of blacktop in them? This wall, yes. And next spring we'll put another one? Yes. Okay. Cool. We're just putting the blacktop down where we had blacktop before. And even the alleys, there's, I can't remember, a couple of them were had but concrete before. We're just going to put the black dot back, not concrete. And then they wanted to match in. There's a lot of driveways and both bituminous and concrete driveways in these alleys are going to. And they'll finish up with some dirt work too. When they what? Get to, they're going to finish up with a little dirt work when they do yeah. the, the, the paving yeah. along the edges and stuff. Yeah, and they got shoulder material and some you know, topsoil to put back in. No. Anything else? Thank you, John. Yeah, Good you. report. I mean, they've, they've come a long way in the last two weeks since our last meeting, I'll tell you. Yeah. And it looks like they're going great guns right now. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm very pleased. So, yeah. And uh, it's just, it, everybody just exhibits a little bit of patience. And if they do have an issue, please contact Ryan. We'll, we'll get it done. Okay, let's move on. Fire Hall Edition. Ryan, do you just want to start off? John, you've had a lot to uh, input on this too, and then any comments you may have. This, this is just kind of an informational item for the council and the public. Um, so our original 
estimate from architectural resources on this project was somewhere between two hundred fifty and three hundred thousand, with some alternates we wanted to look into painting the building and fixing that concrete. Um, you know, as you see from the from the bid tabulation, you know we're double what we thought we were originally gonna spend on this. Um, so with that said, um, you know, and I've been involved with our chief and assistant chief on this and having discussions too and you know what's going to be the best thing you know we want to make sure that and the council does as well and you know make sure we're doing what makes the most sense so we did um, meet with Morton Buildings and they're going to give us some numbers too on you know just looking at some different options um, as well as we're still you know going looking anywhere we can for funds we've been touched with Commissioner Jugovich I have another resolution farther in the agenda which a new grant program just came out to that'll apply for funds for this so it's just still we're working on the best options based on you know where we're at right now and you know my recommendation as of now would be to reject these bids and that recommendation will probably be coming at the next meeting next meeting here but you know just to give you an update and you know, show you where those numbers came in and where we're at now and hopefully we have some numbers back on steel constructed buildings and additions to by the, by the next council meeting just informational and like i said the chief assistant chief are we're all on the same page on this we just need to do what makes the most sense and you know what we got back from our bids and what we've done so far doesn't make the most sense so we need to put some more work and effort into finding the best solution for our fire department and the city and the taxpayers i like that you're, you're working on other funding we've yeah. talked about it and we're doing that john do you have any comment because you've done a lot of research on this too if it's anything that you want the public to know but you, you've gone above and beyond the call of duty on this so well I'll just say we're looking at in a little different direction um, northland morton they all put up I mean, most fire halls you see in, in almost any place is, you know, a Morton building or one of the other ones, Sherbin. So we're kind of looking, we talked to some of those people and they're going to work up a plan and see, you know, if we can go in that direction and save a lot of money. Can they, uh, can Morton make, or do they design a building in the likes of what, yeah. So usually Morton buildings are gabled, correct? Yeah. And can you they... can uh, put a 20-foot door in there if you want. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't, would we be working a, a gabled roof yeah. building into yeah. what we have there? Yeah. Okay. He He's, well, just one suggestion is actually we'd have a, put a, a door in between and you'd have actually a space between them, um, you know, like say six feet, and you would have like a hallway you know, 20 oh, foot hallway okay. or whatever yeah. between buildings. Being, you could get a snow drift, come in off the peak and it would drop right on top of the flat roof. So if we left that. Um, yeah, you don't want a peak coming into a right. flat roof. Yeah. It was just suggestions and we're looking at some other alternatives. Can they turn the gable the other? No, then the snow would fall in front of the garage doors. Well, you just put gable ends on the front or. You know, you can direct uh, any snow or ice. Yeah, because that road should be significantly more cost effective. Yeah. Significantly. And we're looking at some other alternatives beyond just adding on over there. So, yeah, we get, you know, I think we're going in the right direction, especially the cost of what we got for 1,500 square feet. Mm-hmm. Is that is that what he equated out to? Well, that's what these bids are for. For fifteen five hundred fifty thousand. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a, essentially, foot. it's another stall with a little bit more space for meeting is what we originally planned. And when we talked to Martin, they're going to come back with a couple different options, including a you know a new building and a possible bigger option that some type of combination between the fire department, public works. So we're looking at options. I mean. It, we have to. We'll go as far as we can with funding that we can get to exactly. uh, keep the cost away from the taxpayer. Yeah. And, you know, they come in and they're insulated, they're wired, you know, just like these guys came in, they had their people and so 
I think this is the route to go, and we'll find out shortly. Sure. Okay. Anything else? Any else, Council? Okay, there's no action needed there. We'll now go on to 8C, liquor license for the highway. Is there a motion to approve the liquor license renewal for the highway bar? I'll make a motion. Motion by Stewart. Is there support? Support. Support by Brandon. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, I abstain. I have to. Okay. Now we'll go on to... 8D, Resolution 21-52, TIF decertification. Attached is Resolution 21-52. When the city developed the Artesian Estates, the project was funded through tax increment financing, TIF. Essentially, the property taxes that were paid by homeowners in that area were used to fund the development. Since all financial obligations that the city had for that development are now paid, the city can now decertify that portion of town as a TIF district. What that truly means for the city is that approximately $22,300 that those properties pay in taxes will now be added to the city's property tax base. Ryan, any other comments you wish to make about that? <clears throat> nope. I mean, basically, you know, a TIF, a TIF district is a way to finance a capital project like that. I mean, you know, it's nice because you're not taking out debt, but at the same time, you're losing revenue. Um, you know, and this is this is a good thing that we're we paid this off early, and now you know those property taxes come back onto the city's revenue stream, which you know is beneficial for all. So. Ryan, was the the pit addition was that a TIF district? No, that's way before my time. I, I didn't even live in town. You know, no, I, I the, had moved away. No, that was not a TIF district. Okay, so, so for future councils, don't offer people twenty-five year TIF deals. <laughs> I mean, you can offer them five years, ten years yeah. to get into the thing, but twenty-five is <laughs> that's a long time. You know, that's this was nineteen ninety-six, <laughs> and you, you know we didn't collect from those houses. For 25 years but that was the council at the time that made that deal. well oh, that's, yeah that's, 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 that's not with us. no yeah i'm just talking future in the future councils. we have to the councils just have don't to let that, that happen yeah. that's not good that really penalizes the city it really truly does but no well, would, just a question would would this development been able to happen without yeah. doing this yeah i i, I can't I can't I don't know. I was on the well, I was yeah, here, just, and yeah. So there's other routes to finance this other yeah. than going that direction. Well, you just the developer puts in more of his money. He 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 collected all the money. He didn't put his money into it. We did. I guess I don't know. I don't. I don't know the terms of the project, but Councilor um. Carter, from what you know, the research and what I know about. I mean. Tax increment financing is a good option for cities who don't have the resources around them to expand or to develop. You know. Whatever. Yeah, that's that's where my question yeah. was coming in. Like, if, if the city can't afford then, the then capital I think it's, up it's, front, it's, it's it's definitely an op a good option. It wouldn't be if a city, you know, fortunately fuels in fairly good financial shape. Yeah. Where I wouldn't recommend anything like this unless it was an absolute last resort. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, there are benefits, like I said, if, you know, whether the city was in that position at that time, I don't, yeah. I can't, can't comment, I don't yeah. know, but. But 25 years just seems it, like a long, it's, it's yeah, a, it is. you know, it's we ended up paying then a year early, to be yeah. so yeah. one year nice. early. And, and as opposed to the new additions going in right now, that's not one cent of cost to the taxpayer, and we will boon those taxes immediately when they're paid. They will come to us. So that's that's what made that so, so enticing. That that's the plan behind there. So we if did not home, have to if borrow you get money. homes on them. Huh? There has to be homes there before it becomes an income. But mm -hmm. There will be. Quicker, quicker than the pit. How's that? Okay, uh, Ryan, this is just a straight vote, correct? It's, it's not a resolution. resolution so it's a resolution. Okay, is there a motion to? Did we do that already? Nope. No. Okay, is there a motion to approve resolution twenty-one fifty-two? Motion. Motion by Brandon. Support. Support by John. Ryan, please. Uh, any further comment? Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Matthew. 
Yes. Council Marcus. Yes. Carter. Yes. Council Landon. Yes. Mayor Clarich. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. Resolution 21-53. Attached is Resolution 21-53 in the pre-application for the Community Development Block Grant, CDB. I've been working with members of the Senior Center, this is Ryan, on this application. They've identified improvements to the Senior Center, including new flooring, countertops, uh, windows, and accessibility enhancements to the bathroom. Um, we are limited as what we can uh, acquire for CDBG funding. Um, I sit on that board, so I will have to abstain when this comes around. So that's why I'm going to abstain on that one. So I just want to let you know that. But uh, uh, Ryan's worked hard on this. Uh, we've submitted grants in the past. and Everyone that has been submitted by Ryan has been successful. So we're just hoping that uh, that will continue. Yeah, just just a couple notes for the council and the plug. But in the in the past, we've always requested money for usually infrastructure from CDBG. Well, unfortunately, with the last census demographic information they have for the city of Buell, we do not qualify as a low to like a, a low income community. We just don't qualify, and we're not big enough to say section out town to you know put a project in a certain part of town where the senior center comes into play is um, seniors are considered a protected class so that's how this helps us where we can apply for the senior center because of that and you know, the, the senior center especially with CDBG funds um, you know they have members from Kinney from Great Scott from Chisholm too so I mean it would be a benefit for for the seniors and the community. So, you know, we're asking for right around 48,000, um, you know, the ideas of what should be done. You know, I've noticed firsthand the windows need to be replaced. Um, the bathroom improvements, we're looking at putting kind of the automatic doors to a central PDA, things like that. And then new flooring, it's kind of getting a little worn, it's getting scuffed up and things like that. And, you know, kind of that's what they, they identified um, you know, rough estimate is right around $67,000, So you're, to put flooring in that building, it's 30, almost $38,000. Mm -hmm. That's why it's nice to have the CDBG pay for it rather than us. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, so. the, the remaining funds, you know, for that match, if we were to get the grant, would, um, there's some different capital options. There's, in there, plus there's, um, always matching funds, there's uh, money from the American Rescue Plan that the city's sitting on, so I, there would be options to cover that. Yeah, how is it? I'm sorry, Ryan, I don't mean it. No, no, um, what's so we're we're trying to get 48,000 for this grant, correct? Correct. What is there a match? I guess I didn't see that. Yeah, but on that first. And what's our responsibility for it? The first page, it's estimated right around twenty thousand, nineteen two seventy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that. You know, and a couple. I mean, some other funds that would eat into that. Usually, the city of Kinney donates a couple thousand to the senior center each okay. year. Great Scott Township does it. You know, the seniors make it get some funds too if we need need them. But I mean, can we get mine in effect set? We can always use steal a few bucks or not. Yeah, I mean, huh? Mm -hmm. Did you spend it already? No, I didn't spend it oh, already. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but there are options. I mean, it's nice that it's, you know, we can apply for something like this, which we had had a lot of success from the past to, you know, make improvements to something that will benefit the seniors and their organization first and foremost, but also the whole community. The whole community. Further comments or questions for Ryan? Hearing none, this is a resolution. Is there a motion to approve this resolution? I'll make a motion. Motion by Stewart. Is there support? Support. Support by Jean. Further comment? Hearing none, Ryan, please take the roll. Councilor Matthew. Yes. Councilor Marcus. Yes. Councilor Carter. Yes. Councilor Lehman. Yes. I abstain since I'm on the board that rules on these. Or you can still talk to it for it at the board. No, you can't. Nope. Huh? You're not allowed to. Nope. You're not allowed to speak if it's your project for whatever you're working on. I can talk about any of the other 30, 40 projects, but I cannot speak unless they ask me a question. But I cannot 
because I was lobby for it. Let's I was put it that board for eight years, and I they switched that rule since then, oh. John. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Yes. I just want to thank you for sitting on that board and all the work that you do on there for everybody. In the well, community. everything's done by Zoom now. I'm telling you, I, I don't like it. I can't see the people, but it, it's good. And, and the city of Buell's been very fortunate. We've received quite a few uh, grants from that. Okay, we're, let's keep rolling on these resolutions. Resolution 21 54, deed grant attached to resolution 21 54. This program through deed just came out this past week. Final application are due at the beginning of December. The city would apply for the fire hall expansion. Uh, before we have any discussion, is there a motion to approve resolution 21 54? I will make that motion. Is there support? Support. Oh, support yeah. by John. Okay. Ryan, anything you want to add, or counselors, if you have any questions of Ryan? Just, uh, um, Jeff Anderson and Gary Servant kind of directed me towards this. This is a brand new program that's being funded by ARP funds, American Rescue Plan funds, that were, um, that the state received, um, was a limited time window. Basically, you know, the main idea of the grant is for projects that wouldn't get done in the community without grant dollars so you know being that we do have quite a bit of numbers on the fire hall it's something that obviously we need additional funds to get done and it seems like a good project and like i said it's a long application but i'm just looking for the council approval that's what it would be going for it does not require a city match to apply for this grant which is very rare most require a one to one grant so Ask for however much we can on this and see where it goes. If you don't ask, you'll never get it. Well, so Ryan in here says must be no less than the amount required to complete the project. So in that application, we'd be putting in the total for that expansion of that fire hall. I'd probably keep it a little bit less because I think the, the initial thought that you know, with discussion with Diane, we did get that American Red, that 110000 from there, I'd probably show that as what the city would contribute to the grant. Okay. It's just, you think we have a shot at this? Talking to Jeff Anderson from the our consultant, I mean, he thinks we do. Um, you know, the nice thing is we've already had, a, you know, whether it's engineers, we're going to have a new design from this other one. We've done a lot of the legwork already, and it's, yeah. you know, it's shovel ready. You know, we know what things are going to cost, and we don't. You know, I think what they're looking for is things that are ready to start. To start That's the off. key. Shovel ready is yep. the bottom line for cool. any grant loan done nowadays. They, gotcha. they can't wait. So. And we semi failed at the first attempt because it came in too high. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so that's that's an angle that I'll probably play as, you know, here's where we are. You know, we've done all this. We're, you know, we have some funds to commit, but this project won't get done without this funding so it's just it, it's another avenue to explore not you know like I said if we weren't applying for grants like these I wouldn't be doing my job I'd, I'd like to make a comment and this is to the public more than, than anybody but I'd, I'd like to thank Diana and Ryan if you've noticed we've received a lot of grant dollars and you're working with he they've both worked with various counselors on various aspects of this uh, of, of other grants and everything and we've been very very successful and the city of Buell really is lucky uh, uh, they're, they're managing more more dollars than uh, some of these bigger cities around us just through grant funds So that's it's great. It, it, it's thank you for doing all of that. So I Believe we have a motion on this one is uh, there any other discussion? Here you Ryan take the roll. Councilor Matthew. Yes. Councilor Marcus. Yes. Councilor Carter. Yes. Councilor Lehman. Yes. Mayor Clarich. Yes Motion is care resolution is passed Councilor's comments John. Let's start with you well, I think we covered everything we were talking about. Um, the only other thing is we didn't mention that we might be looking at combining a new city garage with the new fire hall. Potentially. Potentially. Where's the location for that? The old shirts up. And the car wash lot? Yeah. Well, that's already at the tax right. forfeit. Oh, is it? Or they would be just wheeling and dealing with uh, the county, and Kim owns the old. We'd have to purchase. Stuff. And I've already approached her. 
So we asked for that option just to give us a number on yeah. what a building like that would look like. Is, so then so we'd have the actually option. two buildings that we could either utilize or sell and put it towards the cost of whatever we do. It's a plan A, plan B. <laughs> That's all. So what's it gonna cost to put up a a public works building like that or or a well we don't know yeah yeah I mean that's that's gonna be significant yeah it's just we're getting yeah. a number it doesn't while they're doing that they might as well give us another number yeah. options. that's all it is public works is only 40 by maybe 30 by 40 and we're looking at 60 by 60 it's not and we'd be actually the roof line we'd be keeping the same you know you'd either hang overhang five feet on the new fire hall on the back side or five or ten feet on one side and ten on the other. But um, yeah. And there's plenty of room there. It'd be a good location actually for the emergencies. Well we'll see. That's that's kind Anyhow, of a that's pipe just a, my comment. <laughs> We're looking at two options. We'll explore this further as, as we get my bids in and we can share with the public and share with the council and as we get them. Anything else, John? No, I think if John can get his people tomorrow and make the corrections and they do what, a little tarring and whatever tomorrow, it's gonna to be great. I mean, it's not perfect, but. Um, I Except like, for winter. You know, if we can get Mercer and that little piece on France to blend in, that could be a problem in the winter time. Or they say we're talking about milling out the other side, so at least they're at the same level. Yep. Oh, there's options there too. So, okay. Anything else? No. Gene, you're up. I got nothing, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Brandon. I have two questions. What's the name of this new development? It really hasn't been decided yet. Oh. I think we just put Burnett Edition on there for just a, a name. A name. Burton. Okay. Burton. Dr the roadway was just, yeah, just Burton Drive or whatever. Okay, I was just curious. I heard no, it. There's I figured out. No. Yeah, I didn't even know he was talking about for a while. Yeah, that's, <laughs> I was confused. Um, my other question is, what is going on with this DNR issue we have? We're in conversations. Yeah, with it's, them. it's in their hands. Okay, that's it? Yeah. We, we don't know, Dave. Yeah, I mean, we've asked for clarification on some things relating to the grant, and we're waiting on answers. For we have our lobbyists working down there too, digging and seeing what what's what. And uh, uh, Ryan, you mentioned that the person that the letter was sent from is leaving the office here pretty yeah. quick, so it's kind of in flux down there. So that's what's going on. I'm just curious what what's going on with it. I mean, if there's action that needs to be taken by by us here, nothing keep, yet. Keep in good graces with. There's, there's nothing yet no. there. Yeah, there's really, there's not any action. We responded to them, and that's that's where it sits. That's where it's at. Yep. Okay. We're waiting for them. Did that answer your question? I think okay. so, yeah. That's all well, I that's it? Okay. Stuart. Uh, I took part in the Rams meeting last Thursday. We had a couple of speakers, from, one from... Uh, I can't even think of it. But the other one was a lady from uh, Twin Metals, the mm -hmm. PR person that she was out in Washington, D.C. And she talked about their the administration taking away their leases for my, her drilling. Um, <laughs> I kind of think they should be pretty lucky that they made it this long with their leases instead of getting, it wasn't nixed in with Keystone Pipeline when they did that right away, but they're uh, got a lot going on with that, so they're working hard. A little bit of a setback, but then the other ones were a couple of guys talking about uh, grant uh, uh, programs for cities and stuff. So one of them, the one guy was, uh, you know him. He, I don't know if he worked with you or what. Uh, from he was from HR Green. 
Either oh, from there. Chisholm? Yeah. Oh. No, no Dragosich, wasn't it? Nick, Dragosich. <coughs> wasn't no. it? No? There was some guy that knows you pretty well, John, or worked with you back in a, a while ago. He's from HR Green. He's an engineer. Not Norm. Not Norm. <laughs> no, I don't, Norm. <laughs> I have his business work for that. There was some guy that mentioned your name. Okay. That he, work, he either worked with for you. Okay. I, I know he know. works for HR Green, and him and his three of his guys, uh, two other guys, were there giving a speech on. Um, that guy from Hibby? Yeah. I don't know. Oh. I got his card on that pickup. Uh, so of course they want to give us money with. <laughs> Here's that, and then uh, just a monthly report on the law enforcement. Uh, Chisholm had 38 total calls for the month of uh, October, uh, 3.21 hours a day average. Uh, so it was a lot less than uh, the month before. I think they had 50 some last month. Okay. That's about it. That's it? Okay. For my mayor's comments, I'd like to give an update on calendar parking. Calendar parking is in effect from November 1st to April 1st. The enforcement of this ordinance allows our streets to be cleared in a timely manner and ensures emergency personnel have access to properties during an emergency. Calendar parking in the city of Buell has a few exceptions where residents should only park on one side of the street. And those streets include South and North Memorial Drive. Residents should park on the house side of the street across from Memorial Gardens. There's no other housing there, so we'll keep that open. Two, Wanla Street, north of Pennsylvania Avenue. Residents should always park on the side of the street opposite the school. That everybody's following that, and hopefully the public knows that. France Location Road, residents should park on the side closest to their homes. That's the Water Tank Street, just for everybody to know. Then Wants one, well, that was the one in front of the school. Uh, Jones Avenue, directly in front of City Hall. The only uh, property that affects is the house right across from here, 309 Jones Avenue. That's so that people can uh, utilize the um, City Hall during the day from both sides of the street. And also that, that keeps that to be cleared so just in front here. His, his property, he doesn't... His property, yeah, just, the, just so yeah. the steps there would stay open. Yeah. And then temporary parking on Woodbridge and Whiteside will be allowed on both sides for two weeks while the crews are working on the alleys, finishing everything up. So we'll, we'll kind of uh, let that one go until we get that, those alleys done for them so it's, uh, they're ready for the winter and everything like that. Um, all other streets within Buell are subject to calendar parking. Parking is also prohibited, prohibited on city boulevards. Just a reminder, that's right in ordinance. Additionally, boats, trailers, or any other piece of machinery or equipment must comply with calendar parking. It has to be moved on the opposite days. Those non-compliance are subject to tickets and can be towed at the owner's expense. Uh, that's all I have, and just, just a quick reminder, public, if you have an issue with the construction going on, that you see something that's a safety issue for you or something of that nature, please call Ryan at City Hall uh, and uh, he'll either work with uh, uh, Engineer Jamnick or, or contact Casper directly. Uh, remember, the people working for Casper can't really give you the answer. It has to really come from Ryan so that we get to the, either to the engineer or to the, uh, uh, the foreman at uh, Casper to run that through. With uh, no further action on that, is there a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. Motion by Stewart. Is there support? Support. Support by John. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carrying. Meeting adjourned at? 7.53. Seven, I have 7.55.